the victory. Thank you for enduring all the suffering and pain that it took you to get to that cross because you had a greater purpose for us. Just like the enemy has a plan for us, your plan is even greater. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody thank Jesus. Amen. Woo, our Father God is so good, amen. Hi, welcome to Faith Church. How are you guys? you guys go ahead and greet one another. And then as you guys go ahead and take your seats, we are going to go ahead and prepare our seeds for seed time and harvest. So once again, we have several ways of giving here at Faith Church. So you can do it on our website, the envelopes in front of your seats, or you guys can download the app and do it on our app. So while you guys do that, we're going to go ahead and enjoy some announcements. Welcome to Unveiling Darkness with John Ramirez. Did you guys receive something last night? Because I know I did for sure. So let's get ready for night two. For those of you that it's your first time here at Faith Church, we hope it's not your last. Visit us at one of our services every Sunday at 11 a.m. in Spanish and 5 p.m. in English, as well as Thursdays at 7 p.m. bilingual. I'm taking a look around and I see all you guys have your yummy coffee shop drinks. Jackie and the rest of the team are absolutely killing it. Come visit them Monday through Friday from 6 a.m. to 4 p.m. Get a drink, shop our merch, and get some work done. We invite you to stop by our bookstore where you can find everything you might need for church. We have bags where you can carry your notebook, your Bible, and we all know what this is for. We invite you to soak in God's presence in our sanctuary. With the distractions of the world, it's hard to put aside time with the Lord. If you're always taken away by the things of the world, come find peace at Faith Church. Our sanctuary is open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. And if you're 18 years or older, we invite you to our young adults group every single Friday at 7 p.m. We have a lot of people that join us there. And oh look, here's one now. Oh hey. Julio, what is one word you would use to describe our young adults group? One word I would use to describe young adults would be enlightening. Here's another one. Hi. Gabriel, what's one word you would use to describe young adults? Truth. And we got another one here. Jackie, what is one word you would use to describe our young adults group? Crazy. And here in the coffee shop, we have Manny. Manny, what is one word you would use to describe Friday night youth? Amazing. And here's Sophie. Sophie, what is one word you would use to describe Friday night young adults? I would use unifying as the word. <laughs> Finally, here we are with Steph. Steph, what is one word you would use to describe Friday nights? So one word I would describe would be empowering. So I hope to see you there. You heard it here. <laughs> <laughs> to stay connected to everything going on here at Faith Church, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. But one thing not on our YouTube is our Open Doors classes. In these classes, you will learn about your spirit, soul, and body, and how to stay free after deliverance. Well, I hope you guys are ready for round two, just like I am. And remember, like we like to say here at Faith Church, God has already blessed you. Amen. We are all blessed to be God's children. Amen. All right. Why don't we go ahead and stand up? We're going to go ahead and confess our Father God as our only provider. Go ahead and raise your guys' seeds, and you guys can repeat after me. And you guys must open your mouths. You guys have to repeat. Faith is personal. I cannot believe for you. Pastors can't believe for you. Pastor... Marty or Pastora Marjorie. No, this is you. So you guys repeat, okay? Thank you, Father. Thank you for the seed that you placed in my hand. I sow this seed in faith tonight, confessing you as my only provider. I do not trust in the government. I don't trust in my own abilities. I only trust in you. I rebuke lack. I rebuke poverty. I sow my seed in faith knowing that I will reap a harvest a hundredfold in Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead and come up, sow your guys' seeds. And then we do have one more set of videos for you guys. So if you guys want to have your seeds.
God bless you, my brothers and sisters, your brother in Christ, Char Ramirez. I just want to bless you today. I have exciting news. I'm writing and I'm talking about a supernatural book called Five Prayer, Destroying Satanic Kingdoms. And man, with Charisma House, I have the opportunity. God has opened the door with a new publishing house. Man, it's going to be a new season. It's going to be a spiritual warfare at its best. A lot of times we talk about the devil, but we don't confront. A lot of times we understand that the devil comes with patterns and cycles of repeat, hindering, delay, blockages, distraction and we don't know how to confront these things. The Bible says that the kingdom of God suffer violence, but the violent take it back by force. And prayer, fire prayers, destroying satanic kingdoms, we are talking about demolishing the stronghold, the bondages, the besetting sins. We're talking about living the life that God has for you, your God's perfect will over your life. The devil understands, and all the devil wants you to do general prayers, you know, general prayers, and, and it's a good thing to general prayers, but when, when you deal with satanic alignment, satanic kingdom, when you deal with the devil himself, when you deal with stronghold, generational curses, demonic systems, demonic frequency, demonic atmosphere. You need a book like Fire Prayer, Destroying Satanic Kingdom, building up your, your arsenals in Christ, building up your arsenals of heaven over your life, your family, to get the breakthrough, to get the perfect will of God in your life, to live the perfect will of God over your life. Yes, battles will come, but you'll be more than a conqueror. Battles will come, wars will come, but you'll be more than a conqueror. You know, it's amazing how God says, the Lord says, be more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. And man, we fight, but we don't conquer. And it's time to conquer. It's time to get back what the devil has stolen from you. It's time to break the patterns and cycles of reaping, every hindering, delay, blockages, distractions against your life. Fire prayer is a book designed for the believer to go higher and deeper with Jesus Christ. And man, it's a prayer arsenal language in your spirit, by an, anointed by the Holy Spirit to give you that victory, to give you that place that you belong. You know, it's, it's time to stop shrinking back. It's time to let the devil get away where he get away with. It's time to put the, set the record straight against the enemy and have that life that God has called for you and for me. I am excited. The book is going to come out. It's going to be a blessing to the body of Christ. I'm telling you, you'll never be the same. You'll be transformed in your spiritual warfare language. And believe me, the enemy will know your name. And he know that you picked the wrong Christian to match with because you have something in your spirit. You have something that God gave you to fight the good fight. In Jesus' name, my brothers and sisters, blessings to all. I'm excited. The book will be out next year, and it's going to touch you. Charisma House, thank you for the opportunity to give me to put this book together by the power of the Holy Spirit. And it's going to change, transform, and it's going to bring alignment. It's going to bring precision, and it's going to bring leverage in your life against the enemy of your soul. Blessings to all. Amen. I believe God has raised me for a generation to build the body of Christ, to bring the arsenals of heaven into the body of Christ, into the church. Once you take this course, it's going to bring you to a spiritual warfare, a mindset, understanding of the things of the spirit, understanding the tactics, the wiles, the scheme, the plots of the devil. We're talking about every demonic playbook that the devil has on the believer, on the church of Jesus Christ today, is being exposed to this e-course. You're going to learn the tools to destroy the enemy, to break up stronghold bondages. It's time to pick up our arsenal from heaven and fight the good fight. Not only the book unmasking the devil, but this amazing e-course that's going to help you fight the good fight. You are going to the battlefield, accomplish the mission, come back out and give Jesus Christ a trophy and be more than a conqueror. Well, are you guys ready? Are you guys ready? Yes? All right. Why don't we go ahead and welcome John Ramirez to the stage, to the altar. Come on. Amen. Blessings. Amen. Come on, people. Blessings. Come on. Give, give, give. Listen, you got to give God the glory. challenge you because you know Christians don't like to be challenged they really don't you know when David Wilkinson used to preach in Times Square Church you know he went home with the Lord and Wilkinson would challenge you to go higher and deeper because there's a place for God when you go higher and deeper there's a, there's a spiritual place with the Lord when you go higher and deeper 
you, be, you, you carry not only authority, but you carry a maturity. Amen? You carry a maturity in Christ that other Christians don't get to that place. You know, I was telling earlier today, and we did, we did like a podcast today, and I was saying earlier today that the scariest book in the Bible is the book of Numbers. And people always say, why the book of Numbers? Why the book of Numbers? You know, why not Revelation, right? And if you look at Revelation, there's a lot of metaphors, and we win in the end, right? But the book of Numbers is it's, 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 it's a scary book because God called us to move from glory to glory. You with me? And, 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 the, and, and pimp preachers had taken that. And have distorted what that means. They, they, they distort it to mean that all oh, glory to glory, and you got a Honda, and then you got a Honda. <laughs> glory to glory, you live in a hut, now you got a studio apartment. That's that's not glory to glory. Glory to glory has to do with your spiritual man. Who you are in Christ. It has to do with your, your purpose and your destiny. It has to do, when you move from glory to glory, that means that you had a God moment in your life. You're not the same, the person of yesterday, or last month, or last week, or last year. And the book of Numbers proves that. Because the book of Numbers bring you to a place, with me, that we had a, we had a group of people, geographically, think about it, 40 years. And then you look back 40 years ahead, and they're still in the same place. We have many churches today doing that. They grow old, but they don't grow up. And the scary thing about a Christian, that instead of growing up, you become deformed. You, you with me so far? And we, we need to understand that, that, that spiritual growth is needed in the body of Christ. Demons know that. Witches know that. Warlocks know that. The realm of the spirit knows that. The church is the church is stuck on. We stuck on the outer man, how to please you, how to make yourself better, how to get a better smile. You know how to brush your teeth, how to brush your hair. And and we 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 don't get to a place with the Lord. You know God never took the devil lightly. Never, the, not that God was afraid of the devil. Beyond that. Look, Jesus was so off the hook that he hit the devil so hard he felt like lightning. That was the first, that was the first attempt, that was the first fight. The second fight, Jesus starred himself and went to the wilderness and said, okay, come, come, come 40 days later. Whoa, whoa. I'll give you a rematch. Beat him down. I mean, smashed him. And then he came, then Jesus said, okay, you can come back again and try one more, try it again. He came to Peter. Right? Because Peter was trying to stop Jesus from going to the cross. Remember we talked about the process, right? There's people in your life that try to stop you in your process to get to the place that God wants you to be. Because if we got haters and backbiters and we got, we got people in church, why do you think you sussy much? Why are you going to church so much? Why do you read the Bible so much? Why do you do this so much? Why do you do that? Because they don't want to see the good things of God in your life. Understand why that pastor think he's all that in a bag of chips? Why he the pastor? You ever seen people criticize movie stars? Right? You can see these people. Well, we, you see these Fred and Flintstone. They, they're like, well, you know, I'm with movie critics. And they criticize. And you got to ask yourself one question. Tom Cruise is making $30 million a movie. There's nothing to criticize about that. You with me so far? So I want, I want to teach you, challenge you. This is my point. Challenge you. Wilkinson always challenges me. Every time I walk home to the store, every time I walk home to the supermarket, every time I went, went home to a place, I was like a gopher. I would walk on him everywhere because they assigned me to him. And they, they told me, you know, sign that because I was in the, uh, the Times Square Church uh, security, uh, volunteer security ministry. So I go home with him everywhere. He talked to me. He poured into me. He, he laid hands on me. He spoke to me about altar calls, and he talked to me. And then he said, one of the greatest things he said, he said, one of the greatest things he said, he said, you, you, preaching's technique, godly character will always keep you. 
And then he taught me a lot of things. And I'm trying to teach you how to grow in the spirit and stay grown in the spirit and be consistent of growing in the spirit. You shouldn't have, you shouldn't have uh, like depleted moments or depleted situation. The devil could suck a punch you. We got that part. He might be on your blind spot tonight. But David had a devil on his blind spot. David, David went and fought the giant, but his worst enemy was on his blind spot. He had to run from that devil for 13 years. You with me? So, so I, I want to teach you. I want to equip you. I want to make you understand. I challenge you, and I told you, email me. I email you back to see how your growth is going. You, you go to these churches, you, pay, you drop $200 for, for, for conference. They ain't going to call you. They ain't going to call you. Believe me, they ain't going to call you. You can call the secretary of the secretary of the secretary of the secretary. People, I went to Japan and preach. I went to, I went, I preached across the street, the U, uh, right across the street from Buckingham Palace, the UK. I saw Big Ben and everything. I preached in a historic building. A thousand people came. And I went all by myself. I'm not entourage. Someone carry your shoelaces. Someone carry your bubble gum. Someone come and carry you in hell, jail, and all that other stuff. I'm like Nicky Cruz. Nicky Cruz, I did that, I saw a picture. 83, he's going to the airport by himself. Go preach somewhere. You, you, you see, I, I'm trying to teach you how to be independent in the spirit. Independent not from people, opinion, opinions of people, but be independent to the truth of God in your life. To the truth of God in your life. I don't care what that person says on TV. I'm going to check in and see what God has to say. When, we, when people come to my meetings and they're like, I'm a prophet. Because everybody's mother's a prophet today. My, my, my brother here, my brother Pastor Fernando's in the house. Everybody's a prophet. Everybody's mama is a prophet. I was telling Pastor, my aunt that passed away, she was a high, one of the highest ranked, Karen, one of the highest ranked witches in the shadows of the demonic. And I was telling Pastor, I was telling yesterday, I can bring, I, she's dead now. She, she, she even renounced Jesus. She didn't want nothing to do with it. She went to hell. She, she, I can bring her here, teach her three scriptures, and have her prophesy in the demonic, and you think she's a Christian. She'll make, pro, these, she'll make these other prophets look like nothing. That's how evil the prophecy of the witchcraft, demonic, she had on her. That if, if you didn't know the difference or you didn't have no discernment, you would believe that she's a, whole, uh, she's a sold out Christian. And today we, 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 in, we, we don't know because we haven't been trained. We haven't been discipled. We haven't been, no one has poured into you. So you believe anything. You, you see people jumping around and hooping and hollering and Jesus is not even in the building. Because they, they, they took this, they took this, they went to the underground church. They took this little Chinese guy. Got not against Chinese people, so don't get it twisted. Little Chinese guy. They bought up to they bought up to 17 mega churches in America. And you know, they looked at him like, why wow, he's an underground church? What did he know? You know what he said after the 17, 17 state, 17 mega churches to ask him, what do you think, little Chinese guy? What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? Do you, think? you know what he said to them? I'm surprised you got this far without the Holy Spirit. Because the, we haven't been disciple, And I want to show you tonight. I want to I challenge you tonight. Email me. I challenge you that in the next six months, whatever, whatever we got left of the year, how you want to finish a year. You want to depend on people, lay hands on me. Oh, anoint me. Pour oil on me. You're not a chicken. <laughs> Pour oil on me. Anoint me. Rub me. Grab me. Flip me. <laughs> prophesy on me. Now the prophecies, uh, don't even prophesy to me. Prophecies, I think they're going by the thousand dollars of prophecy. So see, thousand dollars. So see, thousand dollars. I might do. You live in the projects. What are you talking about a thousand dollars? A thousand dollars, so see. And they, and, you know, and, and I don't blame these pimps. I blame y'all. Because you, you don't, you, you know, I blame y'all. And I'm not talking about here. I'm talking, I blame the body of Christ because my people love it so. So you want someone to tickle your ear. You want someone to tickle your funny bone. 
and then they're robbing you because they're summoning the sorcerer, the witches in the house of God. I know, you know, I know they're witches in the house of God because you could dress them like Christian, you can you can bathe them like a Christian, you can brush their hair like a Christian, you can put on a cheap suit like a Christian, but I know the footprints of the wolf that dressed like a sheep. Because it's discernment. It's discernment. Discernment. I want to challenge you. I wrote these two books, right? Oh, the Lord did. I was just a secretary. <laughs> Let me take that back. I don't. I gotta, all, I, all, I, all I know how to do is color. I, I'm pretty good coloring book. I can do a coloring book real good. But <laughs> I can do a coloring book real good. But when it comes. See, the reason. God can do stuff. God is looking for new skin to pour new wine in. God can't pour new wine in old skin. It's spilled and it wastes. God is looking for people, vessels of honor, so he can release his anointing through you. God is looking for people. God, his eyes are looking back and forth to the earth, saying, who could I use to pour my anointing through? Who could be the next Nikki Cruz? Who could be the next... Uh, Paulo, no, I don't want to say Paulo White because Paul is crazy. Uh, take that one back. <laughs> Captain Kuhlman. Paul is whacked out. Oh, you know, so I want to challenge you. I want to really challenge you. And I want you to email me and let me know every month. Email me. Tell me how you're growing. But if you take the Pepsi challenge, you with me? Or are you sleepy? Right? So, so anybody, any, let me ask you a question. You want to be challenged? Yes or no? Yeah. Or you just come here, give me, give me, my name is Jimmy. Do you want to be challenged? And you email me, I email you back. And all you have to write, all you have to write, I'm doing the spiritual warfare challenge on the, on the subject line. So I know it's you. Right? Because if you, if you don't write it, I get 30,000 emails a year. And then I won't be able to write you back and you back and say, that dude's a liar. Okay, you, you, anybody write this book? No, anybody write uh, Arm and Dangerous? You get two Puerto Ricans and Arm and Dangerous. You get Nikki Cruz and me. <laughs> anybody write Arm and Dangerous? You know, Arm and Dangerous, I wrote it. Let me tell you why I wrote this. I, what, the, the purpose God told me to write this book. Because Christians don't know defense. This book is about spiritual warfare defense, how to hold your ground, how to hold your territory, how to hold the fight, how to, how to, how to take, how to straighten yourself in between the fights, how to conquer. This, this book, because a lot of Christians, you ask them, what's going on? Well, I'm, well, what's going on? Well, I'm waiting on God. But dude, you smell like burnt toast. You're waiting on who? You want me to come by and put some butter on you? That's what you're waiting on. Because that's the, that's the cliche. I'm waiting on God. And everything is falling apart around you because you don't know defense. And then the offense. I wrote this one for offense. Spiritual warfare offense. You think that I'm going to wait home and I know the devil is trying to put on on me schemes, wiles, trapment, setups, hindering delay and blockages in my life. And you think I'm just going to wait. I'll go chase him. Then who grew up in the ghetto here? Thank you. There's some ghetto people in the house. <laughs> I was in a church. I forgot somewhere in Texas. And I said, I said, I was in a church in Texas a couple of months ago. And I said, who? I said, I said, God saved you. God delivered you. And some of you went to jail and all that stuff. And, they, and I said, who, who, any person here been to jail? The whole entire church raised their hand, even the pastor. <laughs> even the pastor. Everybody was laughing. The whole entire church raised their hand. Even the pastor went to jail. That's a good church. And then I turn into Moses. Let my people go. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So my question is, you want to be challenged? So let's get the book. Let's get the book. I, I'll send you the book. I, I don't mail it to you. I'll give you the book now. You pay for the book. Take the challenge. Every month, you tell me, I'm reading the book. I'm here. I'm doing this. I'm growing. Things are falling off. Generational curses are broken. You're never going to learn this in college, baby. 
You sure ain't gonna learn anything in your you sure not gonna learn this in your dead church. Do you wanna learn spiritual warfare? You wanna be challenged. You wanna email me once a month. Yes? Could I could you anybody help me out? Who 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 got the who needs this book? Seriously, because my preaching is short. Who needs this book? No, not that one. No, not, not that one. We're going with this. Give me this. Wait, who, who needs this book? You got a computer? You know how to email? Seriously, let, let's, let's challenge. Let's take a group challenge. Okay, it's not about a, a, a book for a few dollars. Let's take a group challenge to know. You got this one? No? You got this one? Oh, you're my friend. You got my books, bro. Oh, okay. Just in case. We, we, we rocked it. We rocked it in Veselia, right? They preach in the same place we preach, we, and God connected us. Amen? Amen? So, who, 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 I'm serious. Let's serve you because I want to cast out some devils. Hey, what happened? No witches tonight? I'm disappointed. No, no witches, no brujas, no brujos. No santero, no peritita, no warlocks, no uh, suce, no rule workers, no Harry Potters in the house tonight. Huh? You need a book over there? No, no Harry Potters? No magic wand? I challenged Madeline Manson a few times, but he, he just hang out with Justin Bieber and Kanye West. Anybody got this book? Seriously. Five prayers. Have you ever been on vacation? You got one? No. I said, who don't have it? I said it the wrong way, right? You don't have it? Oh, you got to make up your mind. You're confusing me, girl. Yeah. Oh, in person. Make sure you pay. I don't trust Spanish people. Especially Puerto Ricans. I don't... I'd rather go down with a Mexican than with a Puerto Rican. Over here. I'm giving out books. Really good? Thank you. At least I got an honest person. Really book. And then you, you pay people at the door later. No taking no laundry. Listen, this year you have to grow. You have to grow this year. Same old, same old, don't work. Mediocre Christian, don't work. Chicken cook Christian, don't work. God is not looking for Christian Dior's. You got to grow. If your pastor ain't growing you, then you have to do it yourself. You have to do it yourself because God's going to hold you responsible. Every year they go by and you do nothing, you produce nothing, then you produce it. You're but a fig tree coming to church. A parents of Christianity, parents bearing fruit, but you got nothing to give. You got nothing to give to God. Listen, I wrote that book. I even wrote, I even wrote, because I say, I, I even wrote in, uh, I even wrote uh, in that book. Ever been on vacation? Been the worst vacation ever. Who been there? I've been there. You're like, oh my God, I spent all this money. This is the worst vacation ever. Because you don't know what demons was waiting for you at the hotel room that you forgot to pray. I seen people get into some crazy fight, husband and wife on vacation. They saved up six months to go on vacation. They come back talking about divorce. I'm talking about, I got prayers in that book. It's a prayer manual. I got prayers in that book. Did you pray for your kids? Or these homosexual transvestites won't put that devil on your kids. I got prayers for that. But, well, you call them that, but that's what they are. Email me, and I don't mind scared of you. I email you back. Where we at? Okay, anybody here? Anybody with fire prayers? And if you, if you, once you read it, go to Amazon, put a review up there, put a five-star review, help the ministry. Five prayers. Who needs five prayers? Oh, over there. There you go. Look at this thing, you Christians. If I say free, everybody jumping off their seat like popcorn. Stingy Christians. I got to write my books in Spanish. Yes, yes. Uh, huh? Yeah. You know, you know, I'm actually talking to, you know, Guillermo Mandonado, his main speaker. 
I'm, I'm, I got someone introduce me to her, and she's going to, uh, I got a team up with her. She's going to write my books, and, and uh, she's going to translate my books in Spanish. Yeah, we need it. So you can say, Diablo, ahora me meto pa' fuera. <laughs> Something like that, right? What we got? So we can finish. Arm and Dangerous. Anybody, got, anybody need Arm and Dangerous? Serious. I'm asking that one. I can't see that far. I need a shot in my eye. I'm going in May to get another shot in my eye. Then you want anybody want to take my place? Anybody want to get that needle, put it in, put it back out? Anybody want any volunteers? <laughs> I said, I'd rather have Jesus come down and spit in my eye. That, that is a lot easier. But you got to email me, though. Don't sit in the book and don't email me. You got to email, read the first couple of chapters, email me, tell me, John, this is what the book is doing. Declare those prayers. Declare. Learn how to pray spiritual word. Learn the spiritual warfare language. I was telling people yesterday, I even teach people how to repent, how to truly repent in the book. Because a lot of times we don't repent. You know what we get into? We get into a remorse devil. Remorse. Oh, Jesus, help me. I did it again. That's remorse. That's not repentance. And God does not forgive remorse i told you yesterday that there was two people that betrayed the same man peter and judas betraying the same person one truly repented the other one cried out of remorse one went to Pentecost, and the other one went to hell i teach people how to truly know how to repent i teach people in that book how to truly how to renounce and renounce because you think you renounce and that devil shows up six months later in a different suit Renounce. And actually, I got Sunday. This coming Sunday, my inner circle is going to open up again for one week. I got my inner circle gang right here. You my inner circle, right? Yep. Have you, are you learning in the inner circle? A lot. Praise the Lord. See? I'm going to write a highly part of book next year. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Uh, I'm not talking about witchcraft book. I'm talking about like Harry Potter. I want to write a book next year. Seriously. Let me just tell you when we get into the message. It's called Interview with God, Interview with the Devil. And I'm, and I'm, I'm the journalist that interview God and I interview the devil. Right? And then the book is going to have a big throne. Right? And a lot of lights. Right? In the front cover. And then that's God's throne. And then it's going to have a small throne right next to God's. Right? Like, you know. Small one, right? And then, and in, in the, in the, this is the cover. Don't be stealing my ideas. <laughs> Steal my stuff. So, and then, and then I'm the journalist. I interview God. And then there's going to be like, me sitting in a chair, backwards like this, right? And it says, it says John Ramirez, right? So, I'm interviewing God. And I say to the Lord, Lord, I am so, I'm so beyond words that I'm interviewing you. Thank you for giving me your time. And the Lord laughs and he giggles. And he said, my time is eternal. And, and I said, thank you, Lord. And I said, what do you think about humanity? And then he giggles again. And I said, Lord, why are you giggling? He said, because they make me laugh. And I said, why? And he said, because when they're old, they want to be young. And when they're young, they want to be old. Then we're going through this amazing interview about humanity, culture, politics, I mean, everything. And then I got one chapter, Harry Potter gets saved. <laughs> he gets saved <laughs> in one of my chapters he gets saved and then in the end of the book and then I interviewed the devil right and then I said devil I'm glad I'm interviewing you he said well make my interview short because my time is short and then we explain all the all the religions uh, how he loves he loves humanity he loves but he hates you because you're made in the image of God and we go into we go into this whole yeah, we're going to this whole thing, how he traps humanity, how the only religion that he, the only religion that he can bow his knee to is Christianity. 
Amen. I'm going to put that together. The publishing house said, John, you, uh, you want us to write it, for, or you want us to not write it for me. They said, you want us to publish it for you? I said, no, leave me alone. <laughs> let, let me give you a quick introduction about the message today. And thank you for trusting me and getting the book. I don't take nothing. For, I don't, you, if you know my videos, you know my stuff. I don't pimp people, and I don't ask people for money. And I don't get on things saying, you know, so see. I don't, I don't do that. I, I want you to know one thing. That I want to be known for the body of Christ that I love my brothers and sisters. You know, sometimes I'm home and I read the emails. Some, and I tell the truth. Sometimes I'm home and I read the emails and I cry. And sometimes the devil try to push me to question God. And I'm not going to do that. Understand? Because God's ways are higher. And I get some, I get, I get 30,000 emails a year. And you read these emails, you, you weep because of, the, because of the body of Christ is so depleted and so spiritually anemic because no one is training, equipping them, and discipling them in spiritual warfare. So you know when, I, when, when you come to the altar, I'm the, only, I'm the only probably sucker that stays in the altar and prays for everybody. Because a lot of pastors don't do that. A lot of ministers don't do that. They don't do that. But I do it. You know why? Because I'm my brother's keeper. And I want to go the extra mile for you. And if you trust me and you gave me your time and you came here, and then I should, I should make sure that, it's, that your time is valued, validated and is value. And that's why I come and stay and pray extra and extra and extra. And, and the Lord told me one day, the Lord said, John, uh, you know why you pray extra for people? I put that in your heart. I said, why, Lord? He said, because when you did witchcraft on people, you didn't see the side effects. The damages you did to people when you put witchcraft on them. So now I want you to go extra mile for the people that are hurting. And that's why I do it. Amen. Amen. Just want to share that moment with you. So I, I, I want to talk to you about. Let me, let me give you a quick introduction, right? Let me give you a quick introduction on this. Let me just talk to you about something. Maybe I can do this better. teach you tonight, right? Because a lot, you can hear a lot of preaching, but people, and I'm not mocking no one's preaching. You hear preaching, but then no one is teaching. Understand? So let me give you a quick introduction. Who, who's going through something here? Who's going through a storm? Who's going through a challenge? Who's being, who's being challenged? Really, raise your hand. Who's going through something that you, you're like, oh, you know, uh, you're going through a battle, you're going through a storm, you're going through a trial, you're being tested. Who, how many people here? Amen? You with me? So I want to teach you. I want to, I want to teach you something. I want to teach you. Listen, I, I, I take a lot of planes, right? 80% I, I, of the time, I'm not even home. That's like the best marriage for my wife. I'm not even home. I think when, she, when I leave, she cries. I think it's for joy. Because uh, I'm not even home. I'm, most of the time, I'm, a, I'm on a plane going somewhere. I was so confused that when I came here, I came on a car, and I got here a day early. <laughs> And thank God for pastor, she, had, she felt in the spirit that go to the hotel. And I was sitting in the lobby, don't know what to do with myself because I drove here. And I usually take planes everywhere I go. And I was sitting in the hotel a day, be, a day early because every time I fly somewhere, I get there a day early. So my mind is so already adapted to fly somewhere and get there a day early. I, I fly this whole entire year. I don't have a break in between. I even fly on Mother's Day. I got to go to Daystar and do a, some interview. 
So even that, from Daystar, Chicago, from Chicago, I got other places to go. I got Jim Baker, another, I got to do interviews with Jim Baker. I got Daystar, I got to do interviews with I'm, I'm like I'm like everywhere, but God gives you grace to do what he called you to do, right? So when, the reason I'm bringing that up, right, because you see, when, 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 you're in the, when you're in a plane and you hit turbulence, when you're in a plane, you hit turbulence, the pilot, not only he tried to put on the seatbelt, but he tried to find a place air a place he's trying to find a place where he could over he could override or he can ride over the turbulence you hear me he tried to ride over the turbulence because you see when i've been on planes there and i come out of new york city snowing like crazy and the plane takes off and then when it gets above the, the storm above the cloud the sun is there and, and in your storm, you see, the devil's trying to bring you down to his territory, to his atmosphere, to, to spiritual warfare, turbulence. And then you, and the reason you're not getting the victory is because you're flying too low. So, so you have to fly above the clouds because above the cloud, there's a sunshine. Above the cloud is the Son of God. It is the place that we call the third heaven, that we sit with Jesus Christ in the heavens of the heavens and the highest of the heavens in a place of authority. But the devil don't want you to get there up there. But the devil wants you to bring you down so because when you fly too low, God never designed you to fly that low. I'm going somewhere with this. Hope I'm teaching you. Let me share a moment with you, okay? The devil is not all that in a bag of chips. Newsflash. If the devil couldn't kill you when you were in the world, he can't kill you now when you're in Christ. Okay? So let, let, me, establish, let me establish that. You see, there's people here that you're sitting here today. You're sitting here. You, you, you're sitting here. You're putting makeup on your pain. You're putting makeup on your pain, on your hurt, on your losses. You see, but God knows where you are. And God remembers your faithfulness. He brought you here tonight to let you know that he's God and the devil is not. You with me? Listen, God said, let my people know tonight that I remember their faithfulness. See, you don't, you don't know. You don't know what God is making while you're in pain. You don't know what God is making when you're crying yourself to sleep. You with me? You don't know what God is making when you feel all alone. I hear people say, I want to marry, I want to get married because you're going to complete me. Baby, my wife don't complete me. I'm already whole. My wife, my wife is just a bonus. To make memories with, because the day the day I go with the, the day I go with the theology of she don't complete me and I need her to complete me. The day she don't complete me, I leave her. Oh, that's good. You don't know what God is making when you feel all alone. You don't know what God is making when you go into a season of suffering. You don't know what God is making. When you go into a season of suffering, I declare unto you today that God is making something out of you. You may feel distorted. You may feel disjointed. You may feel lost. You may feel that people don't love you. I've been there. You know how many times I... I you know, time, I don't mean, you know what, I tell you, I, I, I have very few people I connect with. Very few people. Connect with pastors, friends of mine. I just connected with a friend here that God hooked me up with. From all the people that went to uh, Vesalia to preach, we had a big meeting there. And the only person I connected was two people. I connected with Pastor Fernando, his wife, and I connected with, I love you, Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's a bad boy. That's my homie. I love you, girl. I connected with him. See, so you, you may feel, listen, you may feel you, that no one loves you. Rejection, shame, and guilt. You may feel that. 
But listen, listen, you can't always know what the master's doing. You can listen, you can always, always, you can't always know what God is doing behind the scenes with you. When you look back in this season, the pain, the hurt, the discouragement, the, the oppression, depression, when you look back in this season, when God gives you the victory and you cross that Red Sea and you get to the other side, you're going to know that, listen, God had a plan when you, all you had was pain. God cannot fail. You know, God always told me, God told me, John, I will always do. This is what God said to me. He said two things to me. John, I will always do my part, but I will never do yours. God told me that. You know what God always told me? Don't, don't you ever worry. Don't you ever worry me being on your side. Because I will always be on your side. Worry about you being on my side. Amen. The Lord always said that to me. You with me? I'm giving you nuggets. When God gives you a purpose, do you believe you have a purpose? Do you believe you have a purpose? When God gives you a purpose, what would God give you a purpose? He's a God of purpose. God is not a God of coincidence. The devil is. But God is not a God of coincidence. The devil is. God is a God of purpose. He's giving you a purpose. The church don't talk about purpose. They don't give you purpose. They don't give you, they don't even talk about that you carry an identity in Christ. We talk about it here. And we teach you how to brush up and clean up your identity like a back credit. That's good. That's good, right? I said back credit. Everybody's still quiet because you know what that means, right? There's a lot of back credit people in the house. Don't pull, don't pull out the FISA score on people here. People are like, woof. <laughs> Speaking to me. Yeah, I'm almost there to 600. <laughs> My wife credit is off the hook. I thought, I thought she made it up. I said, show me. <laughs> 850. I'm like, I say, how do you get that? You don't even work. <laughs> Pray for me. When God gives you a purpose, your purpose will always be tested. When God gives you a purpose, your purpose will always be tested. By why? By why? Because when we get to Jesus, we start as a coal. By pressure. God will always test you. God will give you a purpose, will be tested by what? By pressure. The pressures of life, the pressures of hell, the pressures of the devil will be tested. Because when we come to Jesus, we come as a coal. You know, coal is dirty, black, and ugly. But inside the coal is a diamond. So you can maintain yourself looking like a coal when God created you to be a diamond. And the only thing that can clean up a diamond is the pressure that it goes through. But see, sometimes God cuts me in places. I don't say hallelujah. I say ouch. <laughs> I'm like, Lord, pick another clay. Give me a week off. It will be tested. It will be tested. It will be tested to become a diamond. Because what's inside of you, what, what's inside of you, inside of you has purpose it's not to crush you the devil magnified to make you believe that but it's, a, it's, it's to push what's inside of you you with me so far David was a shepherd boy but he had a king inside of him and God had to bring a Goliath to show that David arrived. So I told yesterday, you need a Goliath in your life to show what's inside of you. You need a Goliath in your life because if you never get a Goliath in your life, you will always be a shepherd boy. You know what I mean? So Queen Esther, no mama, no daddy, crazy uncle, 
grew up in the projects, but she had a queen inside of her. And she was a bad girl because she killed the first Hitler. That's okay. At least one pastor, at least pastor got it. It's to push what's inside of you. To push what's inside of you. It shows who you are. We walk around with no identity to know who we are in the body of Christ. We are copy, duplicate, duplicate, copycat, bootleg, mediocre Christianity. We don't know who we are. We don't have no identity. The devil knows more about you than you know about yourself. That's why what you, you're going to, what you're going to, you're going to hell right now. Because the devil is nervous about you. The devil is nervous about you. He ain't nervous about no one else but you. Because he knows what you give birth to. And whatever you give birth to, he knows he has to kill your baby inside of you before you give birth to it. The devil knows. Because the Lord, listen, the Lord, what? The Lord, the purpose, the purpose shows that you've been with Jesus. Amen. We got a preacher back there. Praise the Lord. Let me show you. That's what the devil is trying to stop. That's what the devil is trying to stop. What's inside of you. You know, I sat. I didn't know nothing what was inside of me. I went to a church in the Bronx. It was a good church for a season. I remember one time they invited me. To drop off tuxedos. I was very surprised. They had one of them little mini vans, little Astro vans. They had a whole bunch of Christian men in there. They invited me that day. I was very shocked they invited me. But I was disappointed because if you if you return in tuxedos, that means they must have had a wedding the night before. With me? They didn't invite me to the wedding, but they invited me to drop off the tuxedos. Mmm. So I'm sitting there in the church. I mean, in this band, thing goes zero to six in five days. I said, this thing was so beat up. We get to the, oh, hallelujah, praise the Lord. They were saying, did you like the way the pastor preached? You did? I ain't know no language. I ain't know nothing. They had to put tabs on my Bible. Because when they said, go to Revelation, I'd be in Genesis. I didn't know where I was at. I didn't know Christian talk. I was so embarrassed to raise up my hands. And my deliverance came in the baptism pool. When they put me in the baptism pool, the hand of Jesus came in the baptism pool, the real hands, and ripped out all my ceremonies. And my inner healing came when I read Isaiah 53 in the discipleship class. And that's all I know. They had, had this brother, he would come to my house because he wanted me to feed him. He would teach me Ephesians 6. I was stuck in Ephesians 6 for two years. This guy ate more salad than a rabbit. And I was stuck in Ephesians 6. Or 2. No, no calling, no nothing. Didn't know who I was. Didn't know I had no identity. Didn't know what the protocol. Didn't know nothing about Jesus. I was, I was, I was in love with him. I know nothing about him. I knew of him, but I didn't know him. And God, look what God has done in my life. Look what God has done in my life. Because there was always purpose in me. I just had to connect with the giver. And he showed me what was inside of me. And now I'm living it today. And there's more to come. You hear me? Because you see, I learned how to speak things into existence. No matter what I'm going through, I speak things into existence. I speak things into existence. I speak because God spoke the world. He spoke everything into existence. I do the same thing. I don't care if it's a bad day, good day. I don't care if I'm attacked. I don't care if my eyesight is whacked out. I speak things into existence. I, I'm teaching you consistency in the spirit. We speak doubt, fear, and unbelief. We speak doubt, fear, and unbelief. That's what we do. You with me so far? I, I my, my sister, I'm a woman of God. I'm a man of God. I'm a child of God. I speak that all the time. Devil, let me remind you. 
They'll get to seal my spirit. That's when witches come into my meeting and the warlocks come into my meeting. Oh, baby, you're not even close to where I was at. You're just a retard that got off the little bus. You're not even close to where I was at. <laughs> you're not even, when, 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 you, when you stand in front of the devil and you sell your soul and you get the marks that I got here and the marks I got here, the marks I got in here, and the cross upside down, you bleed, and there are 17 people bleeding to death in a, in a basement, and the devil is signing contract with that blood. You feel the presence of the devil, and they sing a song. I'm not even going to sing it. They sing this song so the devil can come and collect the contract. And then, then you leave the, when you leave the place, you leave the next morning with a new name. When you go through all that, when you sleep in cemetery, you take human blood and drink yours and drink the animal blood. And when you cut yourself and you feed the pot, your blood, because you want to make a, a demonic covenant, you cut yourself and you feed the pot and you have human bones in that pot. Then you come talk to me. If you dress in black and you got a little black hand in your house, <laughs> stay home. God brought you here to show you that he's big enough that when he started, he's going to finish it. He's going to finish it. And I'm going to teach you today, we're going to get into the weapons of heaven. You know, I was one time I was in St. Croix, right? And that's, that's at the land of the witches, St. Croix, right? I took a seaplane. And, you know, seaplanes, I took a seaplane to, from St. Thomas to St. Croix to go preach. And man, when I got there, we were preaching, preaching. The warlock came, the big warlock from St. Croix, the one, the, the big Willie. He came. He came up to me and said, I'm going to tell you something. I came to destroy your meeting. And all the Christians that were at the altar, was a big altar call. The Christians departed like the Red Sea. Said, John, we love you, but we don't want none of that. You're on, <laughs> you're on your own. Man, I looked at him. I said, first of all, you don't put fingers in Spanish people's faces because we'll bite it off. You understand that? And then after that, he turned around. He said, he said, I came to destroy you. I mean, right face to face, like this, face to face. I'm like, I'm like let me tell you something. I said, two things can happen today. John 3, 16 or Psalm 91. Pick one. He said, you don't talk like a Christian. I said, I'm not a Christian. We're on spiritual warfare right now, baby. You came to kill me, and I got a can, I said, I got a can of whipping. I'm going to open up in a few seconds. You tell me how you want to do this. Matter of fact, I tell him, go home, go get your stuff, go get this, go get this, go get that. And he was like, he was shocked. He was like, how do you know those things? I said, go get them. I'm here for three days. Because when I open this can of whipping, I don't want you to think that it was not a fair fight. He said, you still don't talk like a Christian. I said, and he said, okay, I'm ready. I said, you sure? I said, hey, baby, send the blah, blah, blah. I, man, I put my hands on him. This dude flew in the air. I thought he was trying for the Olympics. He <laughs> fell over there. He came out, and he started swerving on the floor. Man, and the people saying, oh, this phony Christian, pray for him, John. He's going to die. I'm like, let him die. And Jesus then, better him than me. Let him die. I ain't worried about him. Let him die. We'll, we'll do two in one. We'll do this, and we'll do his funeral. 40 minutes on the floor. The Roomba, he, he, he did Roomba all over the floor. Then I pray for him in the end. You don't scare me. I've been with Jesus. Who are you? Baby, your witchcraft don't work. Your witchcraft don't work. Your witchcraft don't work. Let me give you some guidelines. Let me give you some guidelines in the fire. I'm going to go slow so you can write them down. Let me give you some guidelines. Let me give you spiritual warfare weapons. Let me teach you how to build up your arsenal, how to build up your inner man, how to build up your mind in Christ. Okay, let me teach you some things. Let me te I'm teaching you from the devil's playbook because the devil, this is what he's coming after you. This is what he's attacking you. This is what he's trying to strip from you. This is what he's trying to take away from you. So I'm teaching you how to hold it, how to maintain it, how to cultivate it, how to flourish, how to bear fruit. You know how many times they did witchcraft to me? And I got phone calls from the witches, high level of rank witches. They call me. I have my own number. They call me and say, why are you teaching? Why are you, why are you exposing? Why are you doing the things you're doing? Why are you on YouTube talking about us? I said, so what? I said, they said, you made money when you was with us. I said, I'm not with you anymore. I said, I'm not down with you anymore. I told them I'm not down with you anymore. Start exposing. Start sharing the secrets. We hate you. Demons manifest. Hate you, John Ramirez. You used to be with us. You're a traitor. That's a good resume. That's how I know I'm safe. That, when your demon is pissed off. Did I left them? 
Not an ex-girlfriend, a demon. Well, almost the same. Almost the same. With them ex-girlfriends, when you leave them, woo, my God, they put sugar in your tank, they cut the tires. They write graffiti on your car. But a screwdriver? Those are the good old days. <laughs> let, 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 me, let, me, let me break it down to you real quick. D listen, d d this, is, this is what the Lord is saying to you. Let me give you the guidelines. Let me, the guidelines, let me give you the principles of heaven. Let me give you the principles of heaven that the devil doesn't want you to know. First of all, Psalms 23, right? I'm just going to give you just the first part of Psalms 23. If you don't have this in your life, then you have nothing. That means you're trying to put the cart before the horse. Psalms 23 establishes, David established himself in Psalms 23 by saying, the Lord is my shepherd. What he was saying to us, I have a relationship with him. We can't be like Joe. I knew of him, now I know him. When Joe said that he was a righteous man in the land, he knew of God, but he didn't know him until chapter 38. See, so David, understand, David knew God. He was a man after what? God own heart. He knew God. So that's why he, was, he made this statement in Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd. Devil, I'm in relationship with him. I'm not dating him. I'm in relationship with him. With me? So when you do that, when you do that, when you establish that relationship with the Lord, okay, then he'll lead you, he'll guide you, he will nourish you. The weapons from heaven, how do you, uh, listen, the weapons from heaven is to protect your purpose and your destiny. Christians are going home before time and God is taking them home before time because God knows they're not going to fulfill their purpose and their destiny. And God rather take them home before time before they go to hell. How is it that the saints of old had less to work with and they made it and you're struggling? One, recognizing your walk with him. An assessment, an inventory, where I'm at with Jesus, where I'm going with Jesus, where he's taking me, what he's doing, what direction we're going. You need to know that in the spirit. Direction, spiritual direction, recognizing, understanding, having revelation and clarity in your spirit. Not just walking around like, and some, walking around like you walking around in the dark, hoping you, you hit some, something. Walking with him. Understand. Listen, people say, I'm a pastor. I got to fast to hear from God. I don't have to fast to hear from God. I know his voice. Not to fast. Anything I'm No, I fast from God when I have to kill something in the flesh. I fast with God when God tells me he puts me on a mission. He's put me on a special op assignment. Then I have to fast because I have to prepare the inner man to where we're going. Uh, and then you, you got crazy Wanda call you. Hey. And she disguised the voice. You're like, come on, Wanda. I know it's you. I know it's you. You know Wanda's voice. I was going to say Julia, but Julia's back there. And I don't want to say. <laughs> Julia calls you, and you know Julia's voice, but you don't know Jesus' voice. Revelation, clarity in your spirit. Understanding, understanding, knowing the battle. How could you, how are you in a battle? You don't know the battle. Not guessing. Your, your spiritual relationship. Your spiritual relationship has to do with your prayer closet. Your prayer closet is not a home. Your prayer closet is in the spirit. Home is just something that is a location. It's in the spirit, your prayer closet. I can walk the streets. I can walk anywhere in New York City. I can walk. I can be in a plane, and I'm in my prayer closet. I'm in the spirit. I'm in the spirit. What did John say, the beloved John? The day, I was, the day of the Lord, I was in the spirit, in the spirit. I learned how to walk in the spirit. You could be in Costco. It's like, that's like hell. You go to Costco, you could be in the spirit. You, you, can go to, you, can, you, can, you can be somewhere driving, driving somewhere and you can be in the spirit because you have to disconnect yourself from the other man and be in the spirit. And this, and this ain't no new age crap. I'm talking about kill the, kill the other man so the inner man can live. In the spirit. In the spirit. 
Walking in the spirit. Walking in the spirit. Putting the flesh, putting your mindset, the carnal mindset, putting your carnal mindset, thinking, theology, thinking, reasoning, putting self, putting all that stuff to die. That's what I like about David. David, David was a man that in the, in the beginning he made a mistake. I mean, he not about killing a giant, not knowing what was on his blind spot. And then in, the, in the later years, David, King David, later years when his life was upside down, we know David was crazy. He, his life, I think Puerto Rican, his life was upside down. What did David do? When they burned Ziggs, like they took everything from him. He didn't, he didn't have no impulse of being emotional. He didn't just jump and got froggy. He said, I, he, he encouraged himself, and then he seek the Lord. Should I pursue? Is This is my fight. Because when maturity kicks in, you pick your fights. Because the devil will send a diversion fight against you, and you fight like a crazy man, like a crazy man, like a crazy woman. And you worn out, you tired, and you spiritually exhausted, you spiritually drained, and now the real fight shows up. Because that's what I used to do. I used to send a witchcraft version at you, and you get entertained, and Christians, wake, pay, wake up, I throw something at you with witchcraft, something small, get you entertained, and then I come from behind the door and hit you with the real witchcraft. You with me so far? In, in your prayer closet, first thing in your prayer closet, not what book am I going to read today? No, in your prayer closet, let me, bring, let me organize your furniture in your prayer closet. With me, speak, Lord. Start with that. Speak, Lord. Shut your mouth. Speak, Lord. Because what we do, we get in the prayer closet, we pull out a list, and the angels are rubbing their head like, oh, my God. <laughs> Gabriel and Michael are like, oh, God, how do you put up with these people? <laughs> oh, say Pedro, say Julio, say this, say that. Oh, Lord, you know I want a bike. Lord, I want a promotion. Lord, I want to update my car. Lord, I'm hungry. Lord, my car's messed up. You know, my wife is crazy. And, I, you know, you, know you, you need to fix her. You need to get that Jezebel spirit out of her. And, and then, then you, get, you get on your prayer list. And my kids are driving me crazy. And my, I hate my job. I hate my life. This whole prayer list. Lord, help me. Touch me. Anoint me. All this prayer list you got. And then you say three scriptures. Three amen. Three hallelujah, and you leave the prayer closet, and God was ready about to talk to you, and you missed it, because one word from heaven will transform anything in your life. Yes, one word from heaven, one word from heaven will put the devils to sleep. One word from heaven will get you healed. One word from heaven will make you whole. But you missed it because you walked out 30 seconds too early. Because you, you had a one-way street going on in your prayer closet. I was telling people yesterday that atheists become believers one minute too late. And I tell people that people that die, they repent one minute too late without Jesus. Because when you're in hell, it's the real deal. Hell has an address. Hell, the address, you know, what the, you know what the hell is the address is? The absence of God. Because God don't live in hell. Heaven, you know what the address is heaven? It's not heaven. It's Jesus. Everything in heaven is about Jesus. And the only main, main thing in heaven, the only thing, the only main, main thing in heaven are his scars. Everything in heaven revolves around him. The Bible is a love story between a father and a son. An unmatchable book that the author is still alive. <laughs> Prayer closet, speak Lord. Prayer closet, fasting. Prayer closet, true worship. When you have these combinations, you confuse the enemy. You bring it to the confusion to the devil's camp. You change their languages. They attack one another because they can't. They don't know how to grip you. That's why you know. I mean, you know, people did witchcraft. I mean, they're still doing witchcraft to the highest level of the witchcraft. They can't grip me 
because they, they, they don't know my routine. They don't know my, they don't know, they don't know my MO. They don't know how I roll. They don't know how I walk. They don't know how I do things. They don't know how I pray. They don't know that I move heaven and earth when I pray. God move heaven and earth. They don't know that my arsenal prayers are destroying the target, the target, destroying the altars with my name on it, my pictures on it. That's why people come and say, can we take a picture of you? No, you take a picture together. Which? We want pictures of, we want picture of me alone. Come on. Oh, people come up to you, they curse the money, right? I've been, I've been, I was in California a couple of times. They curse the money. They put witchcraft on it, right? So they give it to me. Here, we love you, John. And, and you know they're not Christian because they, they, when they talk Christianity, it sounds like a, like a broken record. It doesn't have the anointing on it. Oh, here, uh, una bendición. Oh, here's a bit of blessing for you. And, and, and I'm like, okay. So I take it. I grab it in my hand, but I don't put it in my pocket because then if I put it in my pocket, I, I own it. So I go up to the usher. I say, usher, are you hungry? Oh, John, I'm starving. I say, here, the devil bought you lunch. <laughs> Give him the $100. Well, not too long ago, I was in, I was in, uh, in, in Glendale. And they come and say, John, we, we, we know your birthday is coming up, and we're not going to see you. Here's this cologne. I said, okay, thank you. I took it home. Opened up the cologne and said, NYC. I never heard a cologne and said, NYC. Cologne. I heard I heard Ford and Tom Ford and, and Gucci and but NYC and, and New York City. And then the top was the top was the wrong top. Witchcraft. They put witchcraft. I can spray myself. I throw it away. I said, I don't want that. God gave me money, I can buy my own cologne. To set up the enemy, but when you have a prayer closet. The prayer closet means, you know what your prayer closet means? That you are consistent with him. Unmovable, unshakable. You unpredictable. So I'm giving you order. God is a God of order. Lord, speak, Lord. Even if you go in there and he don't speak and you leave a half hour later, you know what? Come back later. But I learned to wait on him. Because God's not a microwave. Speak, Lord. That is your prayer closet. Speak, Lord, right? Speak, Lord. Fasting, true worship. True worship. True heaven. When you put on true worship, glory goes up. Uh, worship goes up and glory comes down. That's what the worship that's going on here. This is true worship. This ain't the radio, baby. You can feel the anointing. You can feel the presence of God because they know how to usher it and bring it in. You with me so far? And in the battle, listen to me, in the battle, never lose your joy and your peace. In the battle, never lose your joy and your peace. I don't care what I look like. I don't care what I smell like. I don't care what I'm going, what I'm going through. I'm, I still laugh. I still get my slice of pizza. I still get my chicken wings. <laughs> my daughter has called me, and, I, I'm, I, and, I, and I'm not embarrassed to say, my daughter said, Dad, I'm depressed today. My daughter's beautiful. My daughter looked like, uh, I forgot that, that the, 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 the girl. I, I remember my name, I tell you. My daughter's a beautiful girl. She's only 33 years old. Got the father's look. <laughs> Selena Gomez, my daughter looks like her. I showed you a picture. Looks like her. My daughter said, I'm depressed, Dad. I think I, I, I'm this week, I think I take my life. My daughter tells me that. But you know what I do? I pray for her. I am not shaken because I know who's holding the pain of her story. I'm not shaken. I go get chicken wings. I go get some puff rice because I know how to pray. You see, the devil will use anything to shake you, to take your peace and your joy. Even when my daughter tells me that, I don't lose my peace and joy. Understand? I don't lose my peace and joy. You know why? Because when you lose your peace and joy, this is turbulence. Turbulence. You're flying too low. Lift up. Lift up. Lift up. You're flying too low. Turbulence. When you lose your peace and your joy, flying too low. Because God never designed you to fly that low. Turbulent. And then this is what the devil wants you to do. Turbulent. Self-decision. Self-effort. Self-carnal uh, mindset. 
emotional decision, temporary decision, on temporary making permanent decision on temporary situation. And then the devil got you. Checkmate. Live like a dead man in the outside, but alive in the inside. Let me give you, let me give you one more. Battle in the battlefield, in the battlefield, in the, in the battle, in the fight, in the storm, you have to have structure. You have to have spiritual structure. Spiritual structure means to have a foundation with him. You can't build a house without a foundation. You can't build a relationship without trust. You can't build, you can't build your, your, your territory without having the foundation of Jesus Christ. Paul said they built, and they built, and, uh, and, and if they built on the foundation, they built anything else in the foundation, it's not going to work. So structure brings, structure, you're telling, spiritual structure, you're telling the devil, I have a foundation. There's no cracks on my house. A foundation, that means I have a foundation, I have a foundation with God. With me? Alignment. That's another word. Alignment. The devil, listen, alignment. Christians are walking disjointed, disaligned. Christians are walking deformed, fragmented. Alignment. Alignment means I'm in agreement with the Holy Spirit. Because if I can agree and align with you, two could touch together, touch and agree, walk together. If one will put 1,000 to fly, two will put 10,000 to fly. I will do the 1,000 and the Holy Spirit will do the 10,000. Alignment. You, do you have alignment in the battlefield? Alignment means I can't be moved. You might, you, that means you might move me, but you can't move me out of my position. Because, you see, you might shake me in the fight. You might move me in the fight, but I'm, my feet are still on my foundation. On the, my foundation. My feet are still here. I can't be moved. Devil, you can't move me where God had put me. Because the devil wants you to shrink back. So God will be displeased. About you. It's tricks, man. It's magic in the kingdom of darkness. Delusional stuff. Deliver stuff to shake you, to move you out of the place. Why do you think that God was upset with the angels? They lost the position. They left their post. My, my own CD. This is how I live. This is who I live. This is who I am. I'm teaching you out of my pantry. I'm teaching you out of my pantry. Position. Position is important in the battlefield, in the fight. Position. What position tells me? A spiritual position. I'm not talking about position. Well, I'm position here, position there. You know, not that retarded stuff. Position means I have authority. I'm sitting we in the heavenly places. My position of authority, where I'm at, where I live, where I fight. That's why the devil is trying to bring turbulence to bring you down to his level. But if I'm up here, baby, my authority is from here. I'm flying like an eagle. I'm flying above the storm, baby. But if you bring me down to your turbulence, to the storm, you bring me down here, I'm flying too low. I sit with him. I walk with him. I talk with him. I fellowship with him. I chat with him throughout the day. I learned that from watching my knee. A Chinese man was pretty, he was off the hook. The, the other position, leverage. Spiritual leverage. Knowing the battle and knowing what the devil is trying to set you up with. I got leverage over that. Don't tell me you're going to kill three chickens and you're going to put in a cadero and you're going to blow a cigar and you're going to blow rum and that's going to kill me. You devil, you're a liar. I'm coming the blood of Jesus. I override your blood. I'm going to go to Santa Muerte. I'm going to bring a black handle and I'm going to put your name on it. Baby, Santa Muerte is dead. Jesus is alive. <laughs> Ain't going to work. I'm going to go to the Colandredo. He's going to do a brujo for you. Well, give the recipe. Mine's is better. But if it gets in here, if you can't beat it here, it will beat you out there. But when you have leverage, you understand the battle. You understand the fight. 
You with me? You understand the setup, the schemes, the why, the entrapment, the hindrance, and the delays of the devil. Because there's nothing new that the devil got. He got old systems and dress them up new. That's why we, I hear people falling into systems. Oh, oh, you take the COVID-19 shot. Did you take it? I won't tell nobody. That devil split the church. Don't sneeze. I used to sneeze on purpose when I was in New York. So I can get the elevator for myself. <laughs> you should have people, the white people there. Ooh. I take the I take the next elevator. Good. <laughs> Boy, I had, COVID-19 was a good year for me. Why are you not wearing a mask? We're stupid. God gave me an immune system. It works. <laughs> system. The devil operate in systems. System. You know why? System. Black Life Matter. Antifa. This. Systems. Yeah, Black Life Matter. I'm with that. To the case, I grew up in the ghetto. I saw police officers beat Puerto Ricans and black people up for no reason. I'm with that. I understand that. I've been there. I, I'm, I'm a ghetto kid. I'm more black than you. I'm a ghetto kid. I grew, we grew up with that. And the cops, they were back then, they were known the hamburger helpers that we have now. They were like six, six, five, come out the car, like trees. And there was no iPhone back then. There was oh, phew, ring, phew, ring, phew, ring on, on the wall, baby. So I get that. But it's a system that they use to split and divide and conquer. Same thing, system. What they do? Vaccine, no vaccine, system. Why Jesus was born outside the system in the major? Jesus died where? Outside of the city, outside of the system. And we stupid enough to live for the system. Because you listen to Elmo in the White House. Corpse. Can't even breathe. That's my president. <laughs> no, Donald Trump is my president. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is a point to. I don't like, you, he can talk any way he wants. At least my gas is low. I don't have to buy a $7 apple. <laughs> At least Donald Trump, is not, if Donald Trump is not afraid to say Jesus Christ. He said, there's one more famous than me. His name is Jesus Christ. I go for that. Donald Trump is not into, he, 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 Donald Trump, he doesn't like Ricky Martin. You know Ricky, right? Ricky's good looking, man. That's one I tell you, he's a good looking Puerto Rican. Super good looking, but he's gay. I'm not voting for Ricky because he's Puerto Rican. Ricky like macho man. I'm voting for that. Systems, systems, system, culture. The devil loves culture. The devil loves culture. The devil's in love with culture. Music, changing things around. Media, social media, influencers. Doing the devil's bidding. You suck up those influencers. Oh, how many likes he wants? Subscribe. But your pastor goes on there, preach a good word, and you don't even give him a thumbs up. But the devil goes up there and, you know, he tickle your bone with Jennifer Lopez. You can't even sing. Sound like a frog. Sound like a dead cat. Like, baby, thank God for witchcraft because you got up there because of the witchcraft. My, my opinion, they should have gave Sama Hyatt uh, the movie part. That's just me. When they did the movie with Selena, they said they gave it to Simon Hyatt. Simon Hyatt is better looking than Jennifer. Let me get, okay, I'm almost, almost backslid. <laughs> I almost backslid on that one, baby. <laughs> Simon Hyatt had my heart for a long time. <laughs> Woo! Get off me in the name of Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I forgot. <laughs> I'm going to backslid there for a moment. <laughs> Holy Ghost, help me. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> there you go. That's right. Just all the way. Just in case, baby. <laughs> Just in case. I'm ready, baby. That's right. I'm ready. Woo. <laughs> Some high end coronas are the best. <laughs> okay. Help me, Holy Spirit. I had a before, I had a before moment. You <laughs> see, Pastor? I got to get back over here. <laughs> Don't be laughing at me because you have them every day. <laughs> oh, baby. The tables are turned. You know, you have them every day. You're like, oh, man, I got this husband of mine. So I remember Julio. Oh, Julio and I, we used to really party. <laughs> Look at my husband sitting on the couch. <laughs> it's okay. Pray for me, Pastor Fernando. <laughs> That's why spiritual insight is so key. Seeing in the spirit, understanding the spirit, walking in the spirit, discerning in the spirit. I'll leave you with this. The devil wants you to enter into turbulence. Turbulence means you enter into his territory. You enter into his atmosphere. God never designed you to fly on that level. The devil wants to drag you into his atmosphere. And God never designed you to fly in that level. Because you'd be flying too low. The Bible says, the Bible say, the Bible say, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength and mount up like wings like eagles. What do eagles do? They don't fly to the storm. They fly above the storm. If you find yourself in turbulence today, and you find yourself in confusion today, and you find yourself in chaos today, you are flying too low in your purpose and in your destiny. It's time to rise up. And faith, courage, and trust in him. Strengthen yourself today. Get back the latitude that God designed for you. He created, he created you to fly above the storms. That's my story for today. That's my preaching. Give me one second. Can we put this inside of this thing here to protect it from here? Thank you. Yeah. Amen. You know, there was a story, and we all know this story, about an eagle that fell into a chicken coop. But because she hung out, the eagle hung out, with baby eagle hung out with the, in the chicken coop too long, she thought she was a chicken. And all she did was peck, 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 peck. And one day an eagle flew right over. And she saw the wings expand. Her eagle wings expand nine feet. And so the eagle expand and looked up. And something touched that little eagle's heart. And said, I'm in the wrong place. I feel like I can do that. And looked up and said, I can do that. And he told the he told the chicken the chicken the little chickens around, I can do that. And they laughed, they mocked. And one day he took off and never came back. Yeah. 
can see God doesn't make junk. He makes precious things. One of a kind. That's what he makes. So my altar call is simple. If you're flying too low, come to the altar and get back your ladder too. Amen. It's just not the storm that needs to change. It's you need to change. I hear Christians saying, Christians, carnal Christians saying, well, I can't wait for the new year, January coming, because, you know, I got some new year resolutions. Like, you got what? I got new year resolution, John. I'm going to stop smoking. I'm going to start cursing. I curse a little bit, but I'm going to stop. I'm going to join the gym. Why everybody New Year and in January, everybody wants to join the gym? What the, what's wrong with that devil? What's wrong with that devil? And then January 1st, you join. January 31st, you're off. Because <laughs> you can't keep promises. You can't keep commitments. Without God. He keep them for you. Through you. You with me? So, 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 so. And I said this last thing. I might manifest. Just in case. Great is he that lives in you. The he that lives in the world. And no, and oh, no weapon. Isaiah says no weapon form against you will prosper. But what the devil does, he magnifies the circumstance and makes it a false reality for you to believe it. And then you buy into the story when God is telling you, do you trust him or do you believe me? So my altar call is simple. It's time to fly higher. That's it. Any hindering, delay, blockage, distractions in your life, you know, you write the list down, baby. If you're spending too much time on Instagram and you're doing too much on likes and too much subscribes and you're spending too much on Facebook and you're talking to that wine iron monster in your house called television, la novela. Ah, well, you watch Spanish novela. Every five minutes they cry. Whoa! I, I'd be bored to that stuff. Five minutes, I want to bust out a scream, cry. Yeah. Hmm? Oh, do the cry again? No, no, I don't want you to take pictures and put it up on. <laughs> Slow it down, baby. I'll be, I'll be up there on YouTube. Like, yeah, I better look in an old scene, though. Austin got that still haircut from the 70s. That brother better take. Somebody better take him and give him a fresh haircut. So come up and pray. We'll believe God. Amen. But you know, listen, let's not be foolish. Let's not be foolish. You know what you're struggling with. You know what's holding you captive. You know what's bringing you. When you should be up here, you're flying down here. You know what's holding you. You can't say, well, I don't know what's wrong with me. No, you know what's wrong with you. It's like that guy, Michael Todd. He's like a celebrity preacher. He does this debauchery thing on Easter, and he says he didn't know what he's doing. Really? Really? When I heard someone was telling me not too long ago, I met this girl that uh, I went to preach somewhere. She was telling me a, a, a story. She works on the private airlines, like private jets and all that. And Paula Wright came in with her jet and uh, landed. And Paula Wright was very rude to her. And Paula Wright, she called Paula Wright and Randy at the time they were married. Now she's married to some ugly guy. When I was single, she could have got me for 50% off. Just saying. Married some ugly dude. You can know he's not even safe because he's ugly. So, so, so check this out, right? So her and Randy was fighting over what scripture to use to get more money when they collect the offering. Think about it. 
the debauchery that's going in the house of God. There's people sitting here. You go to a dead church. The pastor's Julio. He wears a crazy suit. He says, Tri Hallelujah, Amen, Santo, Hallelujah. Or, the iglesia del templo de Juan Pablo Ramirez, all that. You go to a dead church and you'd rather sit there than travel an hour. Pastor was telling me, the young lady here that was singing, I think it's, I think it's her over there, she travels an hour and 45 minutes to come to church <laughs> and practice. No, you clap about her, but clap about you. You rather sit in a dead church. Nothing going on, and you don't want to travel an hour and come to a church that's going to feed you, that's going to challenge you, make you grow, and you have an awesome Christian life, and you have open heaven in your life. But you rather sit in a church that the, the heaven is a brass, and you got nothing going on but religion. See, we talk about the prodigal son, right? Oh, the prodigal son left. He took the money. He went with the hoochies. But the angry brother stood in the house and he was more angry and more rebelling and more hateful than the one that left. Because he, he, he's, he stood in the house and he complained about everything and anything. That hateful brother, that when the brother came home, he didn't even celebrate him. So we, we, we sit in dead churches today because of convenience and comfortability, but we don't want to be stretched and challenged and grow until you're living in the book of numbers all your life. But then you work for McDonald's and you supersize fries. But you drive two hours to go to Mickey D's to get your job. But you won't come an hour to see Jesus. And God's telling me people in that status, in that spiritual condition are going to hell. Because there's no growth. Your fig tree. And the parents of Christianity were no fruit. And God's saying, they are caught up with influencers, pastors that are influencers, but they got gifts and influence and no anointing. And that's why Jesus said that today, the devil has taken the anointing off the church and given them influence. And you're sitting under that poison because you rather, this church is alive and this church is doing Jesus no matter what course. I got a church that I preach in Kansas City, Hillbilly Church. I might, and they doing Jesus without, without any course. I got a church in Texas that, not one more, you know, one more church, but I got a church in Texas, in Bill Bill, Texas. I went there, the pastor picked me up the first time. He, he said, I'm the guy with the big hat, big cowboy hat and the big crazy truck. I might not, he's like, he's lying. I said, that's not true. When I got out to my suitcase, I looked at that dude. I was like, oh, God. And he did. I said, Lord, did I hear you right? Well, I got nothing in common with this man. This man got cowboy boots, cowboy belt, cowboy hat, big truck. I mean, it was crazy. Went to his church, on fire. We the best of friends, on fire at his church. You know, they, I mean, they're cow, they cowboy. They're the real deal. They got cow, they got horses. They're crazy. Everybody in his church is strapped and the Bible. I said, you go in that church and you go play stupid. They'll light you up. <laughs> hey, buddy. His mom, two nine millimeters back here. <laughs> Raising hands. Jesus, I love you. Come in here and try to rob the church. See what we're going to do to you. That's a good church. There's a famine of God's word. And if you have to go further out to get water... I'd rather go further on to get water than stay thirsty. My altar call is simple. I mean, go higher. If you go higher, then the devil's under your feet. That means you cut the head of the serpent. He's under your feet. Because you're not fighting on low, you're not fighting in low level turbulence. You're fighting in the highest and the highest of heaven. That means every devil, the third heaven, that means every devil, everything is under your feet. 
every witchcraft, every strong, every bondage under your feet. Every generation curses on your feet. Now, you, do you believe that? Or you believe them or you don't? Do you have faith or you don't? Do you have courage or you don't? I, listen, I've been struggling my eyes for months. And I leave, this, I leave you with the last thing. I'm not a quitter. And I'm not going to give up. And I've been, I went to New York a few months ago, and they gave me, gave me about two shots already in my eye. And I'm going back for the third. And I said, Lord, if this is how you want to do it, we're going to do it together. And, you know, and, and my, the devil attacked my eyesight. And I was, before that, I was seeing, like, for miles. Now I don't see for miles. Now I see medium. But I know God's going to fix it. I know God's going to fix it. This is, I've seen too much in Jesus to doubt. I've seen too much in Jesus to doubt. I'm so crazy. I'm, I'm whacked out. I, I, one day I said, Lord, I'm going to go in this, I'm going to go in this dealership. I'm, I don't have money for the car, but I got money for the shirt. That's how crazy I am. I walked in there. They said, could we help you? I said, where's the t-shirt section? <laughs> the guy thought we live for a car. I said, where the t-shirts? <laughs> he said, over, over there. I bought me a large, put it on. I said, Lord, I'll be back for the car. I got in five of those cars already. I went with my friend the other day. He went to get a car. And, he, and, and when I walked in there, he said, John, you like the mayor in this place. Everybody knows you. I said, that's the favor of God. When God gives a favor. See, I'm not lusting for the car. I'm not lusting. I don't pray and, and say, God, give me, give me. I don't chase his hand. I chase his face. So you can't buy me. You can't buy me with anything. You can't, you can't buy me with nothing. I, you know, I, I've been in places in, in, here in California, sat with really important Hollywood people. You can't buy me. I'm not negotiating. I'm, un, I'm unnegotiable, baby. I, I, I'm not unnegotiable. I'm not going to bend my knee to you so you can give me something. Or well, I'm not going to bend to you so you can give me a movie. Or well, I'm not going to bend my knee to you and change my, my walk with God because I want to make you happy. I don't live in the opinions of people. I live in the truth of God. And if God gets promotion. Listen, the other, I, you know what I said? The other day, and, and I said the other day, I said, Lord, I haven't been on TV for three years. I said, Lord, I haven't been on TV for three years. Do you think you can make a way I can get back on TV? Bing, Madeline Hickey called me. I did two shows with her. They start calling me to do two more shows with them now in May. Jim Baker called me to do two shows with him. I didn't go knock on the door and say, I'm hungry. Oh, you can put me on your show. My name is John Ramirez, and I'll bust a cap on you if you don't put me on. God made a way. Because when you seek the kingdom first and his righteousness, he will add everything on to you. And then another thing, I, I'm, another thing, I share something real quick on my bag. I'm just, I'm, I'm wanna, I want to show you how to trust God. My bag was here, right? Oh, someone took it? Oh, it's coming. I just want to show you something. And, 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 uh, and then, uh, how do you call this? I just want to get something in there. Then we, you can take it back. This is, you see, I marry Asian lady. So when you marry Asian lady, you get Louis. Passed away, so he deserves it. I give it to the dead man, right? Let me just show you something. And this, and this is this is amazing man of God, by the way. Truly amazing man of God, an amazing man of God, right here. And I was supposed to be on the front cover. And charisma says they do six issues, six issues a year, and they're very careful who they put on the front cover. This man earned it, so they pushed me to the side, and I'll be in the front cover. In, in, in July. But I want to show you something.
you have mediocre Christianity, if you got mediocre mindset, then God can't do nothing in your life when it comes to greatness and it comes to supernatural moments in your life. These people sit here, and I'm sure you can write a book. I'm sure you can be an entrepreneur. I'm sure you can sit here, and God can bless you with a seed that will grow and support the kingdom. But you'd rather settle for the projects and the government cheese because you'd rather play safe. Because you don't believe God for big things. And I'm not pimping you. I'm not pimping. I'm not saying, you know, be a, be, I'm not saying be a pimp. I'm saying this. There's structure in the kingdom. There's things in the kingdom that God has for you. But if you don't cross the street and go get them, you always stay there. Amen? So here, what's the difference between me and you? We serve the same God. God don't respect the person. It's, it's how you believe, how you li- how you live in, how, how you see him. And what you're asking, Lord, and, and that stuff I'm showing you, it has nothing to do with, 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 with materialistic things. It has to do with my purpose and my destiny. I delivered cheesecake for many years. I had cheesecake duty in New York City. I'm embarrassed. That lady was paying me $280 for three days. I love that lady. When she died, I cry because I didn't have no money. I didn't have no money. I take that job out the Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And I needed a job. Believe me, man, when she gave me the 280 uh, uh, Fridays, I thought she gave me $2,800. Felt that way. I stretched those, I stretched those 280s like you wouldn't believe. I knew how to work it. And I, I would deliver cheesecake, and she was Jewish, and she would say, and she was, oh, she was a, the bomb. I can give you the website. The bomb, she got 32 flavors. The bomb cheesecake. You can't get no better cheesecake than this. And she would tell me, she would make close to a million dollars a year selling her cheesecakes. And she would tell me, uh, I hate Germany. I said, me too. Because of the Hitler, not because of the people. And she said, I hate Jesus too. I said, oh, <laughs> lady, I'll take your cheesecake truck. i take your piece of crap cheesecake. I parked that thing in East LA. I parked that thing in Harlem, because we're in New York. I, I, I'll sound the trumpet, let the sharks come out, eat the truck, eat the cheesecake, and I'll call you from there and tell you where to pick up whatever's left. Say something about Jesus. I'll triple dare you. I need your money. Don't get me wrong, I'm broke, but I need your money. But say something about Jesus. And, and you know what she did in the end? It was my time up to go into full-time ministry. In the end, she said to me, she wrote me a letter, handwriting, I still have it. She said, no one ever impressed me like you have. And I tried to win her to the Lord. I gave her the coach of Jesus, Michael, Dr. Michael Brown. I gave her books. I talked about Jesus all the time. Not afraid. I, felt, I went to her funeral. I felt eerie. The funeral. I don't know if she may have it or not. Only God knows. But I never back down, and I'm not ashamed of the gospel. With me, let's pray. If we want to, if you come up and you're flying too low, come up and we'll pray, and we we we'll get you back to God's perfect will in your life. With me, come on, Catholic people. Let me just stand up. The Pope is in the house. Can I get a zip of water? So these, this was left for the books. This is it. That's left for the books. For the moral. All right. Oh. Okay. All right. Listen, we're going to come in agreement. There's power in agreement. There's power in unity. You with me? That's why the devil tried to break the unity out of your house. Disagreement. Who wins the last argument? Who has won? Who has? Who says the last word? Don't let the devil. You know, learn how to keep the peace. Learn how to grow across the altar. Leave your gift at the altar. Make right with the person, your brother, your sister. Don't don't. You know, forgiveness is the greatest gift. It's a choice. You know, I wrote a le- I wrote a, I wrote a one page letter in my first book about my dad. My dad used to beat my mom up. My mom had black eyes on Monday. I used to hate my dad. And I pray, every night I pray, when I was 13 years old, 10 years old, 8 years old, I pray every night that my dad would die. 
because of the pain and the torment in my house. And see my moms get beat up. And my mom and my, my father had money for women in the streets, but he had no money to see to feed us at home. And I was very, very angry, very upset. And I pray, I pray. And I said, I hope my father died. And one night my father got shot for a woman that wasn't his. And he died 33, at 33 years old. And even that, he had like 50 women came to the funeral and disrespected my mother. My mom is my hero. She's my all in all. She's my mom and she was my dad. So I've learned, Paul said, take care of your house. Because if you don't, you're worse than an unbeliever. I, 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 I go all out for my mom. I give her the best sneakers, the best coats. I give her money every two weeks. I take care of my daughter. I, I, do, do, I do right. I want to be a genuine Christian. I don't want to be a, a, I want to be a genuine Christian. No matter if I struggle with this, struggle with that, why I said the wrong things, why I said the wrong, why, you know, say something and to a person and they don't have to go back and repent. I'm cool with that. But I could be genuine. And God's looking for genuine believers for the end times, to be the remnant that will usher in the kingdom. You with me? I, 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 I just want to say something. This brother right here is a real deal. Pastor Fernando, what, what's the name of your church? Tunnel. Living Word of Merced. Merced, California. Okay, I'm, I'm New York, so East Coast, West Coast, baby. <laughs> All right, now I'm 40, right? And he came down to support me. He came down to support me. See, that, that's, that, that's a genuine brother. And I know that him and I will do meetings in 2024. I know God's going to make something happen. But he came down. And that clicked with him. I clicked with his wife. His wife's an amazing pastor, too. I clicked with them. They are, they, they are, they are holding their ground, like Nehemiah, on the wall in their region. And the church here is holding their ground here, here, in this, in this region. They're holding their ground, like Nehemiah, on the wall. I'm going to drop a word to you and we'll come pray. The Lord said to tell you, the Lord said, tell my people to make a decision and leave the dead churches and get out of the cemetery, get out of the, get out of the morgue and come to a church that God's going to meet you. And, and listen, I went to a church that was pretty good, pretty good. I went to a church, pretty good church in the Bronx. But it died, and the fire was turned off. And I sat there, and I, and I was a young Christian, and I asked the Lord, Lord, what am I going to do? I don't feel comfortable here no more. What should I do? And the Lord, I heard someone say, Times Square Church, you should try Times Square Church one day. And I, just, I said, well, Times Square Church, what's that? I, checked, I looked it up, I looked it up, I checked it out. I went there. I went to Times Square Church on a Thursday they had, on a prayer meeting. They had 700 people in a prayer meeting. I mean, it was off the hook. I left without a voice. And the Lord said, this is what I want you to be. See, if I would have if I would have stayed in the church in the Bronx, if I would have stayed in a place that I was comfortable, in a place that I was familiar with, in a place that was easy, because you know, I lived only lived like 10 minutes away from there. But then I had to, I had to, I had to, to get to, to the church in, New, in Manhattan, I had to take a train and a bus. I didn't have no car. And it was 20 degrees, 15 degrees, me walking in the cold. But I was lit up on fire because the world was transforming me. And if I didn't move, if I didn't move, if I didn't move, I would have never met Nikki Cruz. I would have never met Debbie Walkerson. I would have never been discipled by Walkerson. If I didn't move, Walkerson never read my first manuscript, my first book. If Walkerson spoke into my life, if I never moved, I would have met, met all these amazing people. Because this is when I move with the when I move with the cloud and I move with the fire at night and I move with the cloud during the day, God was setting up the stage for me to stand here with you today. And I'm saying to you, you sitting in a place that been expired. God's not there anymore because when I went back to the old church and I sat there, I didn't feel the presence of God because God didn't want me to be there anymore. Baby, I hate to tell you and I hate to break the news and we'll pray. You're not married to the building. You're married to Jesus. Yeah. So I you know, 
Okay? Don't stone the messenger. Amen? I'm married to Jesus, not the building. I had an encounter with Jesus, not the building. I went to hell for real in 1999. I died and went to hell and met Jesus. I didn't meet a building. When I came back, I became a born again believer. And then in March, March 19, March 11, to, uh, March 11, 2019, I died in my apartment. And I was leaving my body, and it's off the hook when you die. I tell you, wait till you see. You'll see. <laughs> and March 19, March 11, 2019, I died in my apartment. And I was leaving, and I was leaving, and it feel like a magnet is pulling you, and you have no control of any direction. Then you have a peace that comes over you, and then you hear a door behind you closes. From eternity past to eternity present. And I was I was leaving. You don't have you have the peace that you have when you're leaving your body and you die. You, you can't you, you don't even say like you don't think like you don't think like when you're in your body. You think like I was just saying, oh my god, I die, my mother is gonna cry, my daughter's gonna cry, what's gonna happen to them? You don't feel that. You just leave with a peace, and I'm leaving. And all the only thing that came out of my mouth, and it wasn't in my words, I said, Lord, I'm disappointed you taking me home early. If you would have left me here, I would have done so much more for you. And he put me back in my body. Don't know why he did it. I don't know why it happened. I can't explain to you. I know. The only thing I know, that he has everything under control. Let's pray. So we, we're going to pray. I'm going to say a prayer. And I say a prayer, you come up. And let's deal with the devil. Let's confront you know, I mean, it's cute to talk about them, but now let's confront them. Amen? I love this church. They confront the devil. They got this thing here. It's called spirit, body, and soul, right? Then when I first came here, I read that thing. I was like, I said, where, where did these people been? I said, they, I said they, they know stuff. You see this? You see this? This here. This is worth coming to this class for this. Because some of you are fragmenting and leaking. And no one can repair you but the Holy Spirit through this training and this program right here. Mind, will, and emotion. Or you could be club local, or, or, or if you don't get this, you'll be club local. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we just come right now. We touch and agree with the Holy Spirit tonight, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. Lord, today we break, destroy, dismantle every devil in the way. We crush it, Father God. Don't remove it. Shut the building down in the spirit. We ask right now in the name of Jesus Christ that every devil in this house will have to manifest and go. Devil, we're giving you an eviction notice. We're letting you know that we're not in love with you. We're in love with Jesus Christ. So now as I pray, you come up to the altar. If you felt led by the Holy Spirit, you come up in the name of Jesus. Every bondage, every sin, every demonic stronghold, bondage of every kind, you bring it up to the altar right now in the name of Jesus. Let the devil know today is the day that I'm leaving without you in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm not going to negotiate. I'm not compromising anymore in the name of Jesus.